Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Stephen Harold, Tiny House Listings, and I've gotten a lot of requests uh, to share my little cabin in the woods that I spend a couple days a week out here. And uh, I've shared it a few times on Instagram. Uh, click on the link below and uh, that'll take you to our Instagram page. But uh, I've had a lot of quest requests to see this and uh, so I want to share it with you guys today. So here's a tour and I hope you enjoy it. Back in 2016, December 2016, we had a tiny house workshop out here and we built the shell of this thing over the course of a weekend. Uh, my father and I built the foundation before the workshop occurred and then we, uh, quite a few people came out here and we built the shell and then ever since then I've been slowly doing little small things here and there. Like for example, I recently added a bedroom off to the back, which I'll show you. And, uh, and I did a little um, shower right here slash cleanup area and I built a deck and I've done quite a few things and finished the inside, well, finished the inside. Um, but uh, the thing is, this thing is very, very small, but it's built for two people. The base is only 10 feet wide, and the roof, the top part, is about 7 feet wide, and it's, as you can see, shaped like a trapezoid. Now, as you can imagine, there's not a lot of power needs for this cabin when I'm here. The only thing I use power for is really is charging up devices, watching TV a little bit, uh, documentaries, things like that. Uh, a little fridge and some lights. Uh, so lately I've just been using Christmas string lights. Uh, but as, right now that's in the shade with quite a few hours of the day, this gets uh, a lot of sun. And uh, it's just a 150 watt solar panel and it's hooked up to a battery inside, which I'll show you in a second. And uh, very, very, very minimal power needs here. And it uh, works out great. In the winter time, I heat the entire cabin with a very, very small wood stove. It used to be in another cabin and I migrated it back here because I'm now I'm staying here a lot more often. As you can see, I have a very, very, very rudimentary primitive uh, exhaust vent uh, situation for the wood stove and it works out great a lot of imperfections with this cabin but that's what really what's cool about it. it was never meant to be perfect just a comfortable place to spend some time in the woods here my property in eastern North Carolina all right so that's the outside basically it's taking inside When you first come into the cabin to the left, this is the kind of kitchen meal prep area. Uh, I've got a little fridge right here and a one burner butane stove, teapot. The only time I ever use this for cooking is like when I'm cooking a very simple meal. Uh, a lot of times in the winter I cook on top of the wood stove. Uh, this is more so for coffee, tea, and things like that. And I also have a meal prep area outside. And then way off to the distance there's an actually full on uh, outdoor kitchen. Uh, so this is a great place to kind of get things done. and. Um, you know, cook little simple meals. The original sleeping area, just a very small bed that uh, works out great for guests. You may have noticed this stuff on the wall, it's called Reflectix, and it's a really simple way of putting up insulation. Eventually I will put uh, siding or something over the top of this, but it's double layered, which creates a pretty good R value in here, especially with the wood stove. You actually have to open windows a lot of times and things like that because it gets so hot in here. So this has done a really good job in terms of insulating. This past summer, this is an addition I added to the cabin. Used to, there was just tough text here, plastic, uh, like the plastic uh, polycarbonate tough text, and there was just, you could see out with a couple shelves here, and I ripped that, took that all down, then added a bedroom here, which is good for sleeping one person or two in a pinch. And uh, I like it because it's really added a lot of room to this cabin. And, uh, you know, more oftentimes than not, when I come out here, a lot of times I'll have guests and things like that. So there's a sleeping area here and then also here, so it can easily sleep two, even three people. In the winter time, this is one of my favorite things to do is get the wood stove cranked up. Uh, I did a video quite a while ago, several years ago, where I first bought this and showed you all about it and how it works. You can click there if you want, and uh, it'll let you learn more about this. This is more like a camp style stove, but it works absolutely great. And uh, back in 2018, Hurricane Florence uh, took down a pretty big oak tree, and uh, I've been burning wood from that for the past two winters, no problem. There's a ton of wood left, and um, so that's been a really, really good resource. And uh, so I heat the place for free. I even have a small thermoelectric conductor that I set on top. So once it gets up to heat, you can put that on there. It generates power for a light. And also you can charge devices and things like that just from the heat. Uh, so maybe I'll do a video about that in the near future and show you how that works. Really interesting uh, setup. But uh, yeah, this is one of my favorite things to do. Cook on top of the wood stove. Uh, and if you've ever experienced, if you've never been near a wood stove, the heat from a wood stove is a much different type of heat than electricity or gas or something like that. It's like a dry heat that so kind of just hits you. 
and if you have it the right temperature it's one of the coziest things in the world i absolutely love it the entire cabin is powered up by this little guy right here which is a great asset i have several of these all-in-one um like lithium batteries that you literally just plug and play and so far i'd say without a doubt this is my favorite one uh, i've done a video on that so click on the upper right hand corner and you'll be able to get more info on this thing Quick tip, I always drink from a copper water bottle. If you've never learned the benefits of drinking from a copper water bottle, click on somewhere on YouTube and you'll find more info, but game changer for sure. The entire cabin is wired up by three receptacles, actually four receptacles in here. And it's really great because when I turn on that all-in-one battery, it literally just uh, wires up the entire place. So you can plug anything that you normally would, like in a regular home. You can even power up blenders, all that, uh, just from that one battery. So that's worked out really well. On several of the walls, including the ceiling, I've used plywood to finish it off. And then on some parts of the interior, I used leftover pine tongue and groove, which I really like. Um, it has a weathered look. And then in the new room, I used the same pine tongue and groove. And uh, I really like the look of that. It has a cabiny feel, so that's great. All right, that's the interior, pretty short and sweet. Uh, I'll take you over to the bathhouse that I built uh, this early fall uh in 2019 so let's go check that out all right so the bathhouse is four feet wide and it's about eight feet long so it's 32 square feet altogether, and it has two sections uh the front part is where you brush your teeth you know uh maybe even wash dishes a little bit uh, most of the dishes we washed are there in the outdoor kitchen then the back part is to take a shower so this is a shower house it has a sink and a little pedestal area in it and it has a uh the sink is actually made from a salad bowl which is funny and then the faucet is reclaimed uh the entire thing's lit up uh, and it's powered by a battery that I'll show you here in a second. This is the kill switch for the water pump, so that turns the water pump outside off and on. And then this is purely DC powered, so you can plug any kind of DC um, device. Actually, there are some out there, believe it or not, that plug into standard 110 outlets. Um, so you can plug anything in there that's DC. And at night, this single LED bulb uh, lights up the entire place. Very well, actually. And then it's plumbed up the shower, just cold and hot water, typically like uh, any interior. And then the shower head itself came from an RV style um, shower head, which is great. You can control the pressure, works really, really well. The hot water from the faucet in the shower comes from this on-demand propane tank, and it works great. It actually works beautifully. The water from the shower just drains right down onto the ground, and it's no problem at all because there's a slope off the back, and it just kind of drains uh, away from the shower house. And then the gray water from the sink just drains right here out into a ditch. It's kind of like an old ditch. This property actually used to be a farm a long time ago. And um, the animals uh, were able to drink water right here directly from this ditch that, that runs along uh, the property. So the water comes from the roof. It, when there's rain, it goes into this like kind of homemade gutter that I made. And it drips down directly from this PVC pipe into the 55-gallon drum. And uh, there's always plenty of water in hand. But if not... There's a 275 gallon IBC tote way over there that uh, I can use a small pump over there to pump water directly into this and fill it back up in no time. So it's never been a problem. I'll do a separate video on this setup of how it works, but basically there's a 25 watt solar panel that powers up the battery that's in this house right here. And then there's a small RV pump that pressurizes the interior and the inside for the faucet and for the um, shower. It works beautifully. So anytime there's a drop in pressure by turning on the pump, so the water pump sucks water via that water hose out of here and then it goes straight into the water pump and then into the shower. So this is my outdoor kitchen, very much a work in progress, but uh, once it's done, I think it'll be a great asset to this whole little cabin right here. And there's other cabins along the property. People will be able to use this outdoor kitchen and a place to hang out at night. You know, I have like little lights strung up make it to light the place up at night. Um, but the main idea is to have a place out here to wash dishes and cook bigger meals. Uh, outside and when the weather's nice. So this is the meal prep area. Uh, a lot of cooking's gonna go here and I'll have a big sink somewhere over here uh, installed and then the water again will drain out to a ditch or something. As you can see in the background there, there's a 275 gallon IBC tote which the water comes, drains off the roof and uh, the water in there looks pretty gross now. So I think I'll uh, get rid of that and um, put maybe some new water in there. But yeah, this will be the area. And then right here, there's a big table I made and uh, people will be able to sit here and congregate and talk about whatever and uh, have nice meals and things like that. This is a pizza slash bread slash kiln that I made and uh, this thing gets absolutely roasting. I've had it up to 1200 degrees before and uh, made good bread in there, pizzas and things like that. It takes about two hours to get up the heat and I'll show you guys, I'll do a separate video on this one as well. 
really, really fun, great asset to the property, to this kitchen area. A little farther away from the property, I have another 150 watt panel and that can power up basically any of the batteries out here that I need to power up. I'm gonna extend this to the cabin and have 300 watts instead of just 150. So when I'm here extra days and I need to power it up a little bit quicker, uh, this will juice things up really nicely. So this is the outhouse for the cabin. It's about 75 feet away from the cabin. And I did a video on the outhouse where I built it uh, a couple years ago. So you can click here if you want to see how it was built. Uh, but it was built completely from scrap, so absolutely free. And off to the side here, there is a wood storage like lean-to to keep the wood dry that I use for the wood stove. Very basic, very primitive, and uh, it gets the job done. And I also like the fact that it's away from the cabin. Uh, in a cabin that small, you're not going to want to do your business like that close to where you sleep and eat, in my opinion. So uh, it works out great. All right, that's it for my little cabin here tour here in the woods. I want to thank you for watching. Uh, the total price of this entire setup is roughly about $3,000, believe it or not. So not much money involved. A lot of the wood was scrap wood or reclaimed, uh, so that helped cut costs down. And uh, the main cost was the time put into doing something like this. So if you're a person that needs a getaway, or even if uh, you want to live full-time maybe by yourself out in the woods, uh, this wouldn't be a bad setup, not a bad way to go, especially if you own the land. Um, I know it wouldn't work for everyone, but uh, for me, if my situation was a little bit different and I needed to, uh, and I was retired or something like that, I would absolutely live here full time, no problem, because it's so easy to maintain. Uh, the costs are super low here, uh, very simple, quiet. Wake up in the morning, hear the birds, it's great. Uh, so anyways, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment down below. I'd be glad to answer it for you. And uh, if there's any videos that you think would be a good spinoff from what I've done here that you'd like to see more, let me know that as well. Uh, but either way, thanks for subscribing. Happy 2020, and um, we'll see you on the next video.